I met Anne first, yeah. waiting for the bus. Normally, I avoid talking to just about anybody, but she struck up the conversation. She was so pleasant, so confident. She smiled at me as if she had known me as a kid, and we were just catching up after all these years. She told me she could tell I had a hole in my life. She knew what that was like, she said. She had also had a hole, but it was gone now. I asked her what she was selling, and she laughed. Silent Hill reference. Nothing, nothing at all. That what she had to <laughs> offer was free for anyone who wanted it bad enough. I asked her what had helped her. She just said, James. Yeah, definitely. Redact Games presents... Sounds like my car. Okay, sagebrush. I'm not delusional! Listen, I'm not that sick. And I took a test earlier and I don't have the COVIDs. Well, it no, it was definitely a Silent Hill reference. Especially, and it you know what confirmed it? When she said James. <laughs> that confirmed it to me! Don't call me crazy! Alright, perfect heaven mass suicide. Sage Ranch. To interact with the highlighted, press E. Gate won't budge. You didn't bring anything to bust through. Hmm. Not going to lie, you're surprised it actually made it all the way here. You brought some gear in the trunk. Open trunk. A wire cut of cutters. That was that's my gear. That's all the gear I have. A pair of wire cutters you borrowed from the house. I guess so. I don't know why I needed to put that in the trunk. I could have just put that on the seat next to me. Mm, we're gonna go cut these wires. Use an item, interact with an object to bring up the inventory. Okay. The wire cutters clip through the rusting fence easily and create a small hole. Hmm. Why am I even here? I don't even know. It's too dark to read anything. <laughs> I would marry Silent Hill. Well, shit. Well, I definitely wouldn't marry James. <laughs> Definitely would not. Sam a table. Moldy dishes litter the table, stained and dusty. There's no food, though. Wild animals likely finish the scraps. How'd they get in here? Are there bl broken windows? Were there squirrels in here? Because I wouldn't mind stapling a few of those bad boys. Well, here we go. Use tape deck. Well, uh, I had just graduated from college. You know I was a communications major, that part was true. So, I graduated and I couldn't find a job. I had no idea what I wanted to do and got pretty depressed. My boyfriend at the time said I was holding him back and took off, so that was that. I could have moved home, but I didn't. I stayed out in California, but it's not like I had any friends there. My parents would call and I would just lie about how things were going. I didn't know what I wanted because, I guess, I didn't really want anything. I would wake up and just count the seconds ticking off of my life until I fell back asleep. We were all broken in some way, I think. Some more than others. Hmm. What? How am I supposed to sleep without pillows? 
No, I'm not going to marry James. If I married anyone, it would probably be... Well, I can't marry Hen... Uh, well, I could marry Henry. But he's kind of boring. Harry? But he's already married, right? No, his wife died. I don't know. A nice instrument once. Now the strings are rusted and the lacquer faded. What's this? Note to Leonard. It's too dark to read anything. Dang it, I'm gonna need- Do I have a flashlight? I need a flashlight or something. What? Why are you yelling at me? Lies was around a sink piled with unwashed dishes. The interior is coated in the long dried blackened remains of various melted frozen foods. You know what? Why? Show, don't tell! Let me open that freezer so I can see it! Don't just tell me! <laughs> he did! He did! It's all your fault, BB10. Probably Henry, though. I mean, he's boring, but boring means hopefully not dangerous. Examine cereal boxes. Tons of cereal boxes. None of the sugary stuff, though. Yeah, that definitely looks like Wheaties. Cardboard boxes labeled utensils, decoration, grains, etc. Stacks of cardboard boxes storing everything from jars of yeast and jars of yam to paper plates and replacement light bulbs. Hmm. I don't even know what I'm doing here. What's this? Oh, it's a light swish. Nothing happens. Maybe there's a power source nearby. Of course there is. Read note about Leonard. Oh my god, I've got to turn the lights on. Okay, I gotta get I gotta get some turn this lights on. Generator key. Read performance schedule. Performance schedule. Monday, Josiah plays original hymns. Tuesday, gospel reading. Wednesday, Juliet violin recital. Thursday, gospel reading. Friday, children's reenactment of Book of Serial. I've never heard of that before. Note, the power has been pretty finicky lately. You might have to restart the generator to get the lights back on. The key is in the box and the generator is around the side. Okay. Let's go get this turned on. Pretty sure this was a cold compound. There we go. A diesel generator. There's a keyhole next to the ignition button. You wonder if there's any gas remaining after all this time. There's probably no gas. Oh, there is. Comes to life. I wonder if I uh, get to visit all these other buildings. Let's just get back inside. There's music playing? Where's the lights in this place? Oh, here we go. Get to know the newest members of the flock. Remember them with open arms and open hearts. My name is Christopher. I am from Flagstaff. I was a farmer before, the, before and hope to lend my expertise to help feed the flock. Fun fact. I hold the record for most blue ribbons at the Arizona State Fair Livestock Competition. Come on, let's keep going. I'm Viola. My two wonderful children, my son, Lucas, and daughter, Juliet, are from Fresno. I'll be helping out with schooling our children in the ways of the Lord. Fun fact, I was born in Vancouver, so I'm technically also Canadian. Hello, I'm Peyton. I'm from a small town in Oklahoma. You've probably never heard of. I ran a grocery store in town, but ever since it shut down, I've been looking for something more. Father James is helping me find that. Fun fact, I served in the Navy for a term. Hello, friends. I'm Candace. I love cooking and crafts. My hope I so I so hope I can help energize the flock so that we may fulfill his word. Fun fact, I can speak three languages. Um, I 
do I need to know all this stuff? I'm Josiah, and I'm so thankful to you and to the Lord for giving me a home after years living on the streets. I finally feel like I have a family. Fun fact, blank. Hello, I'm Lillian. I was a student of USC before I dropped out because I couldn't stand the indoctrination anymore. I was looking for truth, and I didn't find it there. Now I know I was looking in the wrong place. Fun fact, I've been to four continents in the last three years. My name is Vance. I saw through the lies of my parents' church. They were filling our heads with blasphemy. Now I see the truth of it because of Father James. Fun fact, I'm a really fast reader. reader. Okay. So, basically, um, uh, cult. It can't be a little confusing getting around our little home. Don't worry, Sister Anne has printed some maps to help you get you acclimated. Yes! I got- oh my god. I don't think I'm gonna finish this game in an hour. Uh, where am I? I guess I'm at the community hall. Have you sinned? Are you plagued by doubt? Do you fear death? Do you have the nagging feeling that your church doesn't have the answers? There is a reason Father James can help. Sounds like a freaking infomercial. The painting shows an intensely focused middle-aged man. He holds a book in his left hand. The painting seems less than professional, but the man's determination shows through. An angel walks through an empty field, his hands pressed together in prayer. This painting depicts an angel tenderly cradling the corpse of Jesus Christ in his tomb. Alright, I gotta turn this music off. Where's the lights? Ah, oh, ping pong table. It's the only game you see around. Doesn't seem like there's enough room to play. What? How did that dorm clo close itself? You take a book off the shelf. We know the conspiracy can trace itself back as far as the 4th century, when the Athan Athanasius and his cronies first began to exclude essential works from the Bible. Okay. A turlet! Ew. Is that something in the toilet? Or is that just like, like, gross, dirty? Ugh. Oh. You look tired. I feel tired. And if a woman have an issue, and her issue in her flesh be blood, she shall be put apart seven days, and whosoever toucheth her shall be unclean until the, the, until the even? And everything that she lieth upon in her separation shall be unclean. Everything also that she sitteth upon shall be unclean. Uh... And whosoever toucheth her bed shall wash his clothes, and bathe himself in water, and be unclean even until the even. And whosoever toucheth anything that she sat upon shall wash his clothes, and bathe himself in water, and be unclean until the even. Leviticus 15, 19, I don't know. Chapter 15, ni verse 19 to 22. I don't know. <sighs> the toilet's gross too. Jesus saith to them, to him, he that is washed needeth, needeth not save to wash his feet, but is clean every whit, and ye are clean, but not all. I don't know. John 13, 10. A perfect heaven awaits those of faith. Hmm. Where are the dang lights in this place? Did I turn anything on? <sighs> ah, there we- oh my god! It's freaking fluorescence. 
Leonard, the pantry is not your personal snack drawer. Food is for the flock to share. If you keep stealing cookies from the storeroom, you will have to answer for your crimes in the cleansing room. Please pray and reflect on your actions and how they harm the flock. I'm praying for you too, Andrew. Oh boy. Read note about Leonard. Leonard had his, hasn't heeded warnings about taking more than his share of food. He keeps swiping snacks from the storage room. Until we can straighten him out, I've decided to move his favorite foods into the farm shed and hide the key on the side of the bookshelf next to the ping pong table. Alright, I gotta go get that. Alright, um... Ping pong table. Leonard. <laughs> no, 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 no. That, Leonard was um, Claudia's dad. But the creepy guy in Silent Hill 3 was Stanley um, Coleman. <laughs> he was creepy. That was the guy who was leaving the, the journals um, with the dolls for um, Heather in the hospital. Oy. You know, some girls might consider that romantic. Reach in prayer. Enable us to use thy manifold blessings with moderation. Grant our hearts wisdom to avoid excess in eating and drinking and in the cares of this life. Teach us to put our trust in thee and to await thy helping hand. Hmm, a huge can of pork and beans, just like you used to eat growing up. Ugh, flies buzz around a sink piled with unwashed dishes. Hey, it's grape nuts. Looks like grape nuts. You guys like grape nuts? I like it. I like a little bit of yogurt when I could eat yo yogurt with some grape nuts in it. Ugh, oh, delicious. You fiddle with the knobs. There is no hiss of gas. No clicking ignition. This range is long dead. Yeah, I never had grape nuts. You open the door and immediately slam it shut after the overwhelming stench of rotting meat hits your nostrils. I know they're not nuts, but they're called great nu grape nuts, okay? Alright, we gotta go get this uh, key. Where is it? You flip through a pamphlet on the shelf. There is an ancient law that modern society has fought to bury. The role of man is to protect and nourish the flesh. The role of the woman is to protect and nourish the soul. I don't know, it's like grains and stuff. It's like wheat. Ah, here we go. Gate key. Farm shed key. I mean, just look it up. They, they, they're old. It's like from the 1920s. <laughs> Grape nuts. <laughs> it's the breakfast cereal. Alright, so... I must be at the community hall. I have this farm key. Old key, the farm shed gate. Oh. Is that the... They're, they're not very good by themselves. Like I said, they're, they're pretty good if you, you like, eat them. It's almost like a, gr a granola, but they're, they're a lot harder. But they're really good in, uh, in yogurt. <sighs> I wasn't here in the 1920s. Oh my god. Okay, where where am I going? There's a gate I gotta get through. I don't know. Open gate. The rustling lock fights back, but eventually relents and the gate unlocks. I don't know. I, he is convinced I'm centuries old. I'm about ready to... Come right over there and smack him. Alright, so... Oh, I think... No, that doesn't show where I am on the on the map. Looks like there's a church up on a hill there. Fire pit. Oh, there's the. Sh is that the barn? Oh man, that that soup is smelling good. Mmm. 
It'll be good dinner. Have have some of that chicken noodle soup, like with vegetables and stuff, and then like have some crusty bread on the side with a little bit of fake butter. Chef's kiss. Oh my gosh. Blood stain. Blood has seeped out from under the door and soaked into the dirt. Flies still swarm the area. Uh, I don't see how that's useful. I guess that's it. Well, no, is this the farm shed? I don't know. Uh, I, I don't know where this farm shed is. it would show me where I am on the map. Alright, so I think Mine's Chapel. I think I'm Ooh, cleansing room. The rectory. Wait, hold on. I think that was the cleansing room I was at. And there was blood in there. What? Can I take this and just ride it around the farm? Maybe this is a shed. Aha! You unlock the door with the farm shed key. The first time I met Father James, I was immediately filled with a sense of peace. It's hard to explain. I guess he just seemed so sure. He asked if I was a believer. I said I'd been raised Catholic, but it never clicked. There's a reason for that, he said. They've been lying to you, all of them. And I knew he was right. Hmm. Read Andrew's journal. Can anyone truly know the joy of the absolute truth? The freedom that comes with releasing all of one's doubt like so much ballast into the sea. I know that feeling now. For so long I searched. I searched among the Catholics, idol worshippers and perverts. I searched among the Baptists, hypocrites. I searched among the Pentecostals, infested by charlatans. I tried so many churches and all of them, all of them to a one, were filled with fools and liars. Now I know why. Father has helped me to see. Alrighty then. It looks like these might have been jars of jam and pickled vegetables at one point. Now they're just disgusting. How long were they sitting there if they're, they got actually rotted in the jars? A ragged old work jacket. You ruffle through the pockets, coughing at the dust. You find a key. Oh, what type of key? Andrew's trailer. Full of garden and farm implements, still caked in old gray dirt, and... Is that cereal? I bet it's grape nuts. A gas can, empty. Watering can, also empty. Bags of seed and weed killer. Alright, so... Oh, Alright, so where are we now? Um, I have no idea. But we gotta go to Andrew's... Uh, trailer. Can I jump this fence? Ugh! It's not even that tall. Can I, I just can climb over it. All right, so this is the community. No, sh whatever. This is community hall. And I gotta go... I don't know. It's 
It's gotta be over this way. There's a fence. Shite. It's gotta be on the other side. We gotta go through this hole in the gate. No, there's nothing but dirt, ro dirt roads and dust that way. You have to go inside. Well, come on! It so shows on the map! What? Look. <sighs> Maybe it's over here. Maybe it's this little shanty town over here. Oh, yeah, I figured that now. Ah, here we go. The trailer park. Oh. Brother Aaron. Oh, uh, my sneeze. No, I think it's, um, uh, it subsided. See how that's useful. Brother Peyton, I need to go to Brother Andrew's house. This is Brother Elroy. Oh, what's this? Sister Hope. Ugh, it's too many. What's in here? Aw, oh, commode. Examine pregnancy test. A used pregnancy test lies tucked away near the toilet. It's positive. Hmm. Somebody was using the was was hanging out in the uh, shady shack. Brother Earl. How come I didn't come across Brother Andrews? <laughs> um, Brother Aaron, which one? Probably not. Brother Christopher. Brother Alejandro. Brother Leonard. Saya, Vance, Henry, Janine. How am I not even like? This is way too big. <laughs> You know what is going to be the very last one I look at? This is ridiculous. Ah, finally. You unlock the door using Andrew's trailer key. Andrew's journal. Damn it. There are damn lights in this place. Life with the flock was good. We would meet for morning prayer with Father James in the chapel, then meet for breakfast, and then we'd set off to work for the day. Some of us worked the field, others worked on expanding the compound. We had a school teacher, we had cooks. In the evening we would study scripture or listen to one of Father's lectures. Then it would be time for penance, more prayer, and then sleep. I slept better those early nights than I had in years. I was home. Do you know how good it feels to find home after so long? I would have done anything for Father. He saved me. Hmm. Oh, I just saved. Here's the light switch. Ok, 
pick up Kita Viola's trailer, read letter. Andrew, I greatly enjoyed our talk earlier. I'd like to continue it. The children will be helping sow the fields tomorrow afternoon, so I'll be able I'll be alone if you would like to stop by. <gasps> what? Sinnings! <laughs> oh, man, the children in the fields. Brian, I love you. You're my brother, but you do not know what you're talking about. This is my family now. They love me, and I love them in a way that transcends even blood. Maybe that hurts you to hear. I'm sorry, but there is no hiding from the truth. I know you have your doubts about your church. You've told them to me. Let me tell you, I have no doubts here. None. Of course, if you stop denying what you know in your heart, we would welcome you with open arms. You need to come to us. Okay. Oh, come. Oh, here it is. Yep. We men must all be fools to buy the malarkey spat at us by mainstream churches. The Catholic Church says we're awaiting Christ's return when they full well know better. And the rest of Christendom believes them, the merry worshippers. Perhaps we'll never know why the Lord waited until Father James to correct the record. Perhaps our Father in Heaven waited for the earthly man he knew could bear this burden with grace. Oh, it. Blessed be our Lord who saw fit to include wretches like me in his plan. I await the third coming with open arms and a heart full of love. It's definitely a hipster cult. Except I think um I think Andrew and uh what was her name? What was her name? Viola were uh Visiting the uh, Shady Shack together. Mm -hmm. Man, oh my god. I wonder why Brother Peyton's uh, door is chained. <laughs> I can't. I, look, look, I cannot. There's too many dang trailers. Nothing in here. Right? I mean, it's kind of ridiculous. Speaking of which, Peyton, Viola. Oh, well, I guess that kind of gives me a little idea. But there's sh still a shit ton of trailers. Leonard. Henry. There we go. All right. Some light. We were chosen, all of us, by the Lord. Do you know how good that feels? To be chosen? I hope you do. It's a feeling we all need in our lives. And on top of that, Father James took a special interest in me. He said he felt spiritually invigorated by my presence. Oh boy. And often called me to the rectory to spend time with him. Oh boy. Not dumb, I knew, but I didn't care. I was so honored to be his chosen. Oh boy. I don't like where this is going. Lillian, forgive me if I'm speaking too freely, but I care deeply about you and I worry that you are having doubts about the Father and his teachings. You're young, Lily. I understand where you're coming from, believe me. But as someone with a lot more life experience, let me tell you that you have nothing to doubt. Oh, come on. 
getting used to this. Here we go. Father James is a prophet of the Lord. He speaks the true word. If you need proof, just look at his prophecies that have come true. But more than that, if you pray and listen quietly, you will feel in your every soul, or your very soul, not every, very soul, the truth of his teachings. I am here for you if you need to talk. Yours in Christ's love, Viola. Oh boy. I had forgotten what love felt like. I thought that all the years suffering under Eric's thumb had ruined me. I thought there was no hope for happiness ever again. But I was so, so wrong. I feel so safe here. Father James has restored my faith in Christ, but also in men and in myself. A wonderful blessing. Yes, there is pain, but it is necessary, and I enter into it willingly and joyfully. So blessed to be part of this flock and to help ensure that my dear children taste the food of eternal life. Lucas has taken to life here easily, but Juliet, well, we will need to be patient with Juliet. She just needs time. She'll come around and see. Father James says that Eric will burn in hell for his sins against me. I know I shouldn't take joy in that, but the thought of it makes me smile. Father says that even Eric could join the flock if he wanted it badly enough, but I know my husband well enough to know that he would laugh in the face of the truth. He is rotten with sin, and he will get what he deserves. Oh, Lord Jesus, please give me guidance. I was only doing what he asked of me, Lord. I was doing it for him and for you, but I'm two weeks late now and throwing up every morning. Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord, I don't know who the Father is. Oh, my God. She doesn't know who the father is. <gasps> it could be James, or it could be... Do I tell him? Will he be happy with me? Or furious? Have I sinned? What cleansing will I need to endure to rid my soul of this black mark? <laughs> Freaking father James is banging everybody. Oh my god. Well, it is a cult. Tuesday a.m. Discussion of Matthew chapter 26. Tuesday p.m. Discussion of the lies in the false churches. Wednesday a.m. Discussion of Father James' visions, prophecies. Wednesday p.m. Healed work. A reading from the book of Sariel. James 1, chapter 1, verse 1 to 3. I don't know how to read these. This is the word of the angel Sariel given unto the men. James, uh, unto the man James in the time before the days of taking, Sariel came unto James as he returned from unrighteous war. The angel appeared into, unto the man James under seven stars in the eastern sky. The angel spoke. Be not afraid, man, for you are chosen as a messenger. These words are the Lord's words become my words, become your words. Oh, so these, um, <laughs> these are... Uh, whatever verses from James's own. Yes, I'm pretty sure that was um, Fiola's pregnancy test, but from James's own bio, I, I don't know. I will see you tonight for alternative cleansing in the rectory. Come early; we have much to talk about. Know the day I received my first vision, and you will know the code. What? The day I received my first vision, and you will know the code. Code. Okay, but I, I guess I gotta, I gotta write this down. So she said, so are we going to have to find her vision? Oh my God, I have no three pages. I need a new book. I need a new notebook. All right. Viola. Alternative cleansing. In the rectory. Okay. So this is, um, it's come early. Know the day I received my first vision, and you will know the code. First vision. I don't know what day that is. We haven't come across it yet. So, um, there's nothing here. No. Uh, yeah, I don't see anything here. I just read it. I didn't see any dates. 
Um, long enough to where all the food is, like, like actual canned foods are rotting in the cans. Or the jars. That's... Alright, well... You think it's a first number? But that's not a day. Hold on. Uh Dang it. Come on. All right. Um oh, James. Uh Angel appeared unto the man James under seven stars in the eastern sky. Hmm. Let's see. One, one, two, three, seven stars, eastern sky. Well, and, and yeah, it says this is the word of the angel Sariel given unto the man James in the time before the days of taking. Sariel came unto James as he returned from unrighteous war. I don't know what the days of taking are. Um, but let's see. Alright, well we're going to go over to the rectory now. Man. Um, oh, this is a school here. I will right, we'll go. Maybe we can get inside the school. Nothing happens. Maybe there's a power source nearby. Of course. What we got here? Examine kids' jackets. Lucas, John, and Juliet's jackets. You rustle through the pockets and find nothing. Dang it. I often helped Viola in the schoolhouse. I enjoyed working with the children. We taught them reading, writing, scripture. Viola was one of the most faithful among us. If Anne was like the mother of the flock, Viola was the older sister. I remember one lecture she gave the children on the nature of hell that was so vivid, so unflinching, it had the kids in tears. I told her she was scaring them, and she said, good, they should be scared. Hmm. Something is written on the calendar, but it's too dark. All right. Well, all right. I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna have to turn the light on. Down here. I bet you that um, the code is gonna be in here somewhere. All right. Got the generator going. Juliet, honey, why are you so stubborn? Why do you reject the flock's love? You don't pay attention in class. You don't try hard on your assignments. You lie about doing your readings. I'm worried about you. I've asked Father James to take some time to speak with you one-on-one. -on -one. Please listen to him. He knows so much. He can help soothe your doubts, I promise. Just please give it a try. Love, Mom. I wouldn't put any of my kids, especially my daughters, near that guy. Oh my god. You flip through the wall calendar and see the following upcoming dates marked. April 7th, Celebration of the Crucifixion. June 3rd, Feast of the First Revelation. That, that was it, June 3rd, right? July 18th, Celebration of the Birth of Our Prophet. So June 3rd. 6th. 
three. All right. Take a book off the shelf, the illustrated book of Bible stories. Some of the pages are torn out. All right, so read Lucas's assignment. A big role model for me is Father James. He is a prophet of Jesus and a great person. He is going to save all our souls and let us go to heaven. Father James is funny and smart, too. He makes jokes during his talks that make everyone laugh. He shows that you can be a very good person, even if you are a little bit weird-looking. It's what is on the inside that matters. For teaching me that and for saving my soul, Father James is my role model. I love Father James and Jesus. Wonderful work, Lucas. Father will be so proud. <laughs> oh, my God. This sounds like indoctrination to me. Anne is my biggest role model. She is a perfect wife and mother to all of us, just like Mary. She does everything she is told to help Father James. She thinks about everyone else before she thinks about herself. I hope to be just like her if I grow up before the days of reckoning. Great work, Ellie. Anne would be so proud to hear this. You will have many chances to be just like her in paradise, so don't worry. Be Juliet's assignment. My role model is Jesus because he is perfect and he loves everyone. I want to be more like Jesus. See me after class, Juliet. What? Are you serious? Oh my god. Be John's assignment. Leonard and Peyton are my role models. They know how to fight and how to protect the flock from Satan and secular bad guys. I like how he misspells secular. Good work, John. I hope it never comes to violence, though. Poor Juliet. I hope she got out. You can make out faded writing from the last lesson, the first revelation, the day Father James received the truth. Okay, we already figured that out. You're not serious. <laughs> Read note to Juliet. Okay, yeah, that one. Alright, so I think we got everything here. So we know how to get into the cleansing room in the rectory. See how that's useful. How am I supposed to get through these doors? Uh oh. What happened to my wire cutters? Who is my character, anyways? It's padlock. Oh, okay. Oh, do we say. Padlock clicks open and slips easily off of the gate. I knew you were going to say that. <laughs> Alright, we need some light in here. Oh, for fuck's sake, where's that generator? generator seriously what why does it look red in this room is that the cleansing room ah there we go it's too dark to oh my god why not is it turning the light on and off there? What? <gasps> this is the cleansing room! <laughs> what? An angel walks through an empty field, his hands pressed together in prayer. As we all know, sin is our debt. And pain is our currency. It is by paying with pain that we cleanse ourselves and become ready for the days of reckoning. However, new teachings have been bestowed upon me by the angel Sariel in a vision. 
the uh, doctrine of alternative cleansing has been revealed. As we know, sin is the intersection of unclean vectors. But if one is fully cleansed, how can sin come from that act? In fact, the opposite is true. The act. The, to know deeply a truly cleansed body is to be cleansed oneself. That is, to lie with one who is fully cleansed is to bypass the need for blood cleansing. Now this applies to all cleansed bodies, but, and I do not say this to boast, as of now, only I am fully cleansed. No! <laughs> no! No! Oh, God! <laughs> this is horrible. We have all been given our purposes by the Lord. And... If we listen close enough to our hearts, if we pray hard enough, we can feel that purpose coursing through us. To excel in our God-given purpose is its own form of cleansing. Some of us are called to labor in the fields, to feed the flock. Some are called to train and to defend us. Others to teach our children the true way of things. The Lord calls upon many women to provide succor and relief. Oh my god. Now those of you with husbands may be rightly confused. Is this not a sin? I ask you, do you not love the Lord more than your husband? <laughs> Would you deny the Lord himself your love? Oh. I am his flag bearer. Oh god, I'm freaking the fuck out here, you guys. Ugh. A large flat pedestal, not unlike an altar, stands at the foot of the bed. From, read from the Book of Sariel. The world is a wicked place, and redemption can only be found through Christ. This is the truth, and though it was known to the Lord's flock, they did not heed the word. The Lord Christ descended in final judgment some 1,000 years ago, as foretold in Scripture. Among man, he found not one true believer. The angels wept, but the covenant was kept as it must be. None were given eternal life at the feet of the Father, and men were left to fester in their own sin. For 200 generations, man has desecrated the earth, given unto them. They have murdered each other, known sinful women, and lusted after false gods. They do not deserve to be saved. God, all right. Uh. <sighs> Why did music change? Read note to Viola. My sweet, sweet V, I have a very important task for you. There is a deceiver among us, a lying snake, who intends to bring ruin upon the flock. This is a test. We must prove our faith by removing this cancer. The deceiver will never reveal himself to me, but he might, might to you. I would ask that you use your feminine charms to get close to the men in the flock. But specifically, I am worried about Andrew, Leonard, and Peyton. Get them to open up to you. If they have nothing to hide, they will be forgiven before Christ. Find the deceiver so that we may strike him from this world and prove our dedication to our Lord. Do this for me, for the flock, and for Christ. Father. So she was sleeping with all these guys on his behest, trying to find the uh, mole, and then she gets pregnant. Oh my god. A bed covered in red satin sheets, pillows askew. Oh my god. Alright. Um. Oh god. A note on the Messiah. I would like to clarify a few points of confusion that I have noticed among the flock. It is imperative that this is understood deeply and truly. I am not the Christ. Only Christ is the Christ. I am a prophet of Christ, his messenger of flesh, a vehicle of the word. I have been blessed with abilities beyond the normal man and a great responsibility by, my, by our Lord, but I am still only a man. My teachings are directly transmitted from our Heavenly Father. Reading Meditation on Suffering, transcribed from a sermon given by Father James. What do each of us have in common? The soul? The stain of sin? The love of our Lord? Yes, these things, but also 
We have all endured great suffering, and that, friends, is why we are here. As Christ suffered, so we have, and will continue to suffer. Our suffering paved the path for each of us to join the flock. Suffering, as we know, is the divine currency, but like any currency, we can exchange one form of legal tender for another, and so we pay our debt in physical pain. Why? I know some of you fear the cleansing room. I understand. I really do. But bodily pain is but temporary. It can be overcome. Spiritual pain is eternal. It will follow us long past the days of reckoning. This is your choice. Bleed now from temporary wounds of transient flesh or suffer eternally. When you put it that way, it's not such a difficult decision, is it, Father? Fuck this guy. Seriously! <laughs> not, I mean, not, not literally, but like, like, fuck this guy. I mean, no, I, I don't even know. I need some more light. I hope that blood... <laughs> In the uh, cleansing room or whatever. I don't know. Is his. I am definitely tired. But I need to read this diary here. And I can't turn the light on. Damn it. Is that like switch? Maybe it's outside the door here. This is hard to see. I know it's too dark, and I can't turn the dang light on. That's to the bathroom. Dusty old typewriter with a yellowing sheet of ribbon in the car carriage. All right, well. Uh, oh, maybe this, this switch here. Oh, that's upstairs. Yeah, I don't see a light switch either. And there's a diary on the floor. I don't I don't have like a I wish I had like a flashlight or something. No light switch is in here. Alright, we're gonna go upstairs. Read notice. Beyond these doors is a sacred place. Only fully cleansed believers who have been given express permission by Father James may enter. The Lord protects this room. Trespassers will suffer mightily. Oh well. I don't see how that's useful. I might, I might have to come back. Uh... Alright, so I have a... Trailer master. Oh, that gets into all of the trail. Oh, so it's a man. He had a key to all of the trailers. That motherfucker. It could get into all of the trailers. I gotta get out of here. Man, it's getting dark. I guess I've been out here all day. Yes. I think I think this game warrants it. That character warrants it. Alright, um, we're getting into all the trailers now. Oh god, it's so dark. Master Key doesn't seem to work on this door. Strange. It's rusted shut. Right, we already went in there. Of course. <sighs> They're all freaking rusted shut. Hug. <laughs> that wasn't even a big hug. Don't even don't even start crying that you're you're dying.
It's too dang dark. <laughs> Alright, we, we, we went in here, right? Or did we? Yeah, we did. Okay, Andrews. Or did we? Yeah, yeah, we did. <sighs> Alright. Now that was a good ug. I told you there'd be one or two. one or two minute. Oh. Here we go. Leonard's trailer. Yeah, I'm pretty sure he is dying from him. I need a light. The deceiver changed Father James, though only a few of us seemed to notice. He had new revelations almost daily. Doctrines changed. Actions that would have been terrible sins previously were suddenly permissible, while seemingly innocent behaviors became mortal sins. The others seemed to have no problem going along with it. I wondered if something was wrong with me. Father grew visibly agitated, and as adamant as he was about the sanctity of his new revelations, something was different. He was scared, and that scared me. There it is. Oh, there's a bottle of Jack on, on the bed. Thou shalt not kill. But it's not that simple, is it? We are God's army. We must protect our flock. This is a war with souls on the line. We must be resolute, unwavering. So why won't my hand stop shaking? Why do I keep seeing his face when I close my eyes? Somehow I didn't think fighting Fighting for the Lord would mean beating an armed, unarmed man to death with a shovel. Lord, why won't my hand stop shaking? I, I don't know. Who did he kill? I don't know. Leo, it's got to be him. I'm certain. He hasn't talked yet, but I have no doubt. Scrounge around his trailer and see if you find any leverage. We busted the lock grabbing him last night, so you'll have to use your bolt cutters to get in. Henry. Whoa, is it, um, who's, um, did I try to get into and it was, I couldn't open it? <sighs> Shite. Peyton? Maybe it was. I gotta go back. It was over right at the front. I don't think it was Andrews. I don't have bolt cutters, though. Were there bolt cutters in there? Yeah, it was those three... There's gotta be bold colors around here. Alright, come on. Ah, there we go. It didn't work. Mm -mm. Oh, that's right. You're right. You're right. Never mind. Yeah, <laughs> the guy with all the fucking chains. Um, this one, I think. Clip the chains, which fall limply to the side. The door hangs slightly ajar. Ooh, shovel. It's the one that they beat him to death with. I think. 
Alright, I need to uh, turn the light on. Peyton's notes. Father James Israel, born Donald McKiltrick, born Idaho, early 50s, unclear. Vietnam vet, honorably discharged 1970 due to shrapnel injury, born again in late 70s. Criminal record includes larceny, drug possession, vagrancy, married to Ann McKintrick. Signs of amphetamine addiction. Receives visions from an angel named Sariel starting in 1986. Left former church and founded Perfect Heaven with wife. Purchased Black Sage Ranch 1991. Ann McKittrick, Israel. Born Oregon? Not much known. Worked as secretary for a heating and cooling company for years. Met Donald slash James through church. Married 1981. Complete loyalty to husband. Primary recruiter for group. Andrew, Andrew Custer. Born? Recruited in Houston, owned a far, small farm, runs the farm for, for group. Frequently writes to his brother in El Paso. Viola DeWitt, mid-30s from Albuquerque. Two children, Juliet, 11, and Lucas, 9. Recently divorced from her husband. Claims frequent abuse. Frequent consort of Father James. Oh, man. Leonard Vanderhoff. Late 20s, former police officer, National Guard, military training, discharged due to drug addiction. James promised to help him get clean. Seems to have worked for a little while. Access to weapons, trains, group members, and arms and tactics. Often has alcohol on his breath. Relapse? Dangerous. Lillian Carter, early 20s, born San Diego, 1972. Recent college graduate, some useless degree. Depressed, trouble finding job, often goes to rectory for alternative cleansing with other women. Seems to have more doubts than some others. Reach out to her? Hmm. So we need to get into Lillian's, uh, her, uh, trailer. Nope, note from Lillian. I changed my lock like you suggested. I left a copy of the new key under the tree near the fire pit. Transmit code, oh boy. Um, compromise, need, do not wreck, frontal raid, armed mill, grade, HW, and training, most are 100% brought in, will use violence. Oh, boy. Um, I better write this down. X, V, 7, 6, 8, and 3, 0, 6, 8, 6. Uh... Correct. Okay. In case I need that. Ah, shit. Open. Okay, yeah, yeah. Um, so I need to get to the fire pit. I feel like we're close to getting to the bottom of things here. Where did she say it was near a rock or something? Tree? I can't see shit. Ah, uh, here we go. Examine patch of dirt. Soft mound of dirt stands out near the base of the tree. You dig into the mound and sift through the loose dirt, finding a small brass key inside. All right. I think so. Oh, Chewy, what are you doing? Uh, all right, so we're, get, we're getting into the Williams. Open this up. Ooh, pick up cleansing room key. Oh, boy. Come here, Chewy. He risked his life coming to me. Somehow he could tell that I was wavering, 
I'm still not sure how. He was from the FBI, he said, and he was here to investigate the group as a cult. When he said that word, I told him to go to hell. I almost went right to Father James, but I didn't. He left me a pamphlet that talked about the signs of a dangerous cult. At first, I refused to read it. What was the point? How could that have anything to do with our group? But I did read it, and even though my entire brain was screaming at me, I went back to him. Mm-hmm. I know, Gabby, I think I'm pretty much almost to the end, though. I'm like, <laughs> I'm almost done. I know you are beginning to doubt, and you are right to do so. Father James is not what he says he is. If you want to talk more, hang around after an evening prayer. I'll linger, too. I can help. You are not alone. I'm putting my trust in you with this. Oh, man. Don't you weak, come on. Are you in a cult? It's a scary question, but an important one. Spiritual fulfillment and community, community involvement are important aspects of a healthy life, but it's possible for these to take deeply unhealthy and even dangerous forms. If you're reading this, someone who cares about you is concerned about your well-being. The group displays excessively zealous and unquestioning commitment to its leader and, whether he is alive or dead, regards his belief system, ideology, and practices as the truth, as law. Questioning, doubt, and dissent are discouraged or even punished. Mind-altering practices such as meditation, chanting, speaking in tongues, denunciation sessions, and debil debil bleh, debilitating work routines are used in excess and serve to suppress doubts about the group and its leaders. The leadership dictates sometimes in great detail how members should think, act, and feel. For example, members must get permission to date, change jobs, marry, or leaders to prescribe what types of clothes to wear, where to live, whether or not to have children, how to discipline the children, and so forth. The group is elitist, claiming a special, exalted status for itself, its leaders, and members. For example, the leader is considered the Messiah, a special being, an avatar, or the group and or the leader is on a special mission to save humanity. The group has a polarized us versus them mentality, which may cause conflict with the wider society. The leader is not accountable to any authorities. The group teaches or implies that its supposedly exalted ends justify whatever means it deems necessary. This may result in members participating in behaviors or activities they would have considered reprehensible or unethical before joining the group. For example, lying to family or friends or collecting money for bogus charities. Chewie, you're right in the way. Subservience to the leader or group requires members to cut ties with family and friends and radically alter the personal goals and activities they had before joining the group. The group is preoccupied with bringing in new members. The group is preoccupied with making money. Members are expected to devote an inordinate amount of time to the group and group-related activities. Members are encouraged or required to live and or socialize only with other group members. The most loyal members feel there can be no life outside the context of the group. They believe there is no other way to be and often fear reprisals to themselves or others if they leave or even consider leaving the group. If one or more of these are true for your group, it may not be a healthy community, but don't worry, help is available. All right, well, how can the absolute truth change so rapidly? First, the doctrine of cleansing, which was immutable and unavoidable. Pain is currency, etc., etc. Then the doctrine of alternative cleansing, which seemed to change the rules against extramarital sex and polygamy, but only in the service of a clean body. Now Father James has received another revelation, which he pronounced privately only to a few of us women. It's not written down. It hasn't been added to the Book of Sariel, and it directly contradicts previous doctrine. Father says that the Lord has brought a deceiver into our midst in order to test the strength of our faith. We must be ready to prove our dedication to the flock. And like Abraham with his son Isaac, we must... Oh, God, Chewy, come on. <laughs> we must be ready to sacrifice our notion of what is moral in order to serve the greater cause. Is this God's plan for us to use our bodies as tools? Why doesn't this feel right? Because it's not right. Chewy. He's like, Mommy, you got to be done. All right, come on. Oh, my God. You hear him? He's purring like a motor. 
All right, boop. Come on. All right, let's read this one. I gotta do this with him in my <laughs> my chest, dear. Lillian, forgive me if I am speaking too freely, but I care deeply about you, and I worry that you are having doubts about the Father and his teachings. You're young, Lily. I understand where you're coming from, believe me, but as someone with a lot more life experience, let me tell you that you have nothing to doubt. Father James is a prophet of the Lord. He speaks the true word. If you need proof, just look at his prophecies that have come true. Didn't we read this already? I think we did. And all right, should we get down. Okay, I gotta finish this. No, from James Lillian, a member of the flock who will not be named, happened upon one of the books you purchased while on a trip into town. While reading non church materials is not strictly prohibited, I must caution you against consuming too much, if any, secular material. The godless worldview is powerfully poisonous, with its promises of pleasure without consequences and freedom from rules. But here you know true freedom, freedom from sin, freedom from damnation, and the true pleasure of God's love. Consider this a friendly warning. I want the best for you, my sister. If it becomes clear that your reading is compromising your faith, we may have to change the rules in order to protect, to protect you as well as the rest of the flock. Ugh. All right, so what do I... I have the... Okay, I gotta go to the cleansing room. I think. I think this is it. Oh, well, we haven't even gone into the church, but cleansing room it is. <laughs> I I hope somebody did kill him. I I I, I hate to say I want I I wish death on on people. Well, I <laughs> I mean I do play a lot of these games, but uh, I hope somebody took 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 matters into their own hands. I don't know. Is this the cleansing room? I don't know. You unlock the barn with the cleansing room key. Yeah, it is. Because if you look at the map, it, the, the barn is, is, is the cleansing room. Sin is thy debt, pain thy currency. Read guidelines for cleansing. Improper thoughts, lust. Three cuts with small blade. Improper thoughts, doubt. Five cuts with small blade. Stealing, one finger or one hand, depending on the item's value. Sloth, two lashes from the whip. Taking the Lord or Father James's name in vain. Five cuts, large blade. Murder, rape, idolatry. The violating body part and genitals, eyes. Oh my god! Old blackened blood has seeped into the cracks of the altar. Oh my god. Pull the chain. I don't think I can get in there. It should not. to the mines. He called it the cleansing room, where we would exchange pain in this realm for forgiveness in the next. We'd all gather in front of the altar, and one by one we would declare our sins to the flock, each of us given penance to perform in front of the others. Bloodletting, self-flagellation, I saw men break their own bones, and women cut off a finger that had caused them to sin. 
It was true devotion, and it was terrifying and wonderful to see. Uh, wonderful? Uh, pretty late, Trevor, but, uh, you're coming in at the good stuff. Because it was a little slow in the beginning. And yet the Lord in his infinite love and compassion has not forsaken those who have forsaken him. No man is without the cloud of sin, but the light of the Lord shines brightly. To make thyself ready for the Lord's embrace, cleanse thyself of sin by way of self-sacrifice. Give up thy blood, thy flesh, for it is soiled and pathetic, unworthy of the Lord's gaze. For each sin committed by the hand, whip the arm once. For each sin committed by the feet, whip the leg once. For each sin committed by the eyes or mouth, cut the face once. Pray thou over thy spilled blood, and in cleansing it thou cleaneth, cleanseth thyself. Sin is thy debt, earthly pain, thy currency. For those who are thoroughly purged of sin in this manner, and who have followed the commandments of the Lord, and who believe truly in their heart and body, the days of talking will bring them to the feet of the Lord, free of earthly flesh, wash in divine light for eternity. Have faith, be cleansed, and this will be your reward. Uh, well, I, I think that you're probably having a pretty good time. <laughs> I would be taking a having a gummy today if I wasn't uh, in the middle of uh, being sick. Oh God! All right. What did I just get? Small key with uh. Where are the mines? Oh, just north. Uh, it's supposed to be that here. We only have the mines and the ch the church to go into, and I think we'll, we, hopefully we'll, we'll 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 have our resolution. And lock the door to the mines. Oh. Well. <laughs> it's it's fine. Examine wooden boards. Um. Ooh, I'm gonna break this shit open. You hack away with the axe until the boards fall away, revealing an open space behind. Oh, I guess I'm going down. Oh yeah, there is. But I feel like we—I mean, this was a larger, large compound, and I feel like uh, we we got most of it covered. I still want to read Anne's diary. Oh no, is that more blood? Oh, what is this? Um, I don't know, Trevor. Can't, I, oh, weapons! Military-grade rifles and ammunition are piled among the straw-lined interior of the crate. Contingency protecting the flock. Our secular enemies see our imminent... No, I don't. Um, our, our secular enemies see our imminent salvation and find themselves filled with jealousy and rage. They want to keep the world immersed in sin, and they will stop at no lengths to prevent us from fulfilling the Lord's plan. We must be prepared to protect the flock. Henry was able to use his contacts in the Southwest Patriots Corps to, help, to get us arms and armor for protection. He will be leading training drills starting Thursday, mandatory for all in the flock children included. We will rise up and fight in Christ's name. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. So, uh, there's a shit ton of pamphlets. Um, hmm. Oh, oil can. How can I see the... What do I need oil for? Okay, there's another crate. There is, um... Are these all the same ones? Are they closing on their own? I think so. 
on. I might get lost in here. Oh, these must be uh, target practice. I wish I had a freaking... <laughs> I wish I had a flashlight. How did I come into this compound and I, I brought a freaking pair of wire cutters but no flashlight? Move minecart. You eke out the remaining oil from the can onto the rusting wheels. Oh, what's this? Salmon wooden boards. We're gonna break through there. You hack away with the axe until the boards fall away, revealing an open space behind. <gasps> There's a body. A decomposing body curled into the fetal position. You reach out to touch it, and a note falls from the corpse's pocket. How can I read and there's no light? <laughs> L, I got your delivery. I made a copy of the key to James's room last night, but I think Andrew noticed. He was acting suspicious. I'm going to hide the copy somewhere we both have access to it, in case something happens. Look in the southwest corner of the cornfields. You'll find it. Okay, so that's clearly um, Peyton is talking to Leonard. And I need to go to the southwest cornfields. All right. Let's listen to this tape. I think it might have been my fault they found Peyton. We were seen together too often, maybe. But how would they know? Maybe they saw the pamphlet? I don't know. I don't know, but I can't shake the feeling that it's my fault. It doesn't matter. They found him. They told us he had decided to leave the flock. I didn't believe them, but I didn't ask any questions. After that, we moved on. It was like he had never been there at all. It scared me, but instead of trying to get away, I just let myself fall deeper in. I did my best to shut out any doubts. It was easier that way. <sighs> I wish you can give the, bur uh, the body a proper burial, but it would probably fall apart if you touch it. Oh, man. I gotta get out of here. I can't see. Oh, my God. You guys, I can't see anything. Shit. That's a minecart. No, it's just really super- I don't know why, but it seems, like, darker now. Oh my god, this is the worst. Hmm? Can I not? Um. <laughs> Trevor, I think I have a, a, an inkling, but I'll talk to you about it after the stream. I need to get out of this room and I cannot find my way around. Brightness. <laughs> that didn't do anything! Or maybe a little bit. Alright, there we go. Why am I stuck in here? What 
not wearing any sunglasses. All right, so I need to get out of this. Uh... I need to get out of these freaking mines. All right, so those are... I don't know why it just, like, all of a sudden, like... feel like I'm just running back and forth. And I just want to finish this. Alright, there's a light. There. Maybe I follow these lights out of here. And that's a dead end. Wait, what's this? Activate elevator. How come I can't activate the elevator? Am I stuck down here forever? Am I never going to be able to get out of this place? Maybe I have to be on the other side. I don't know. There is? Oh my god. So I've been navigating this entire thing without any light. Oh my god. Here's a minecart, minecart. I'm just like literally just wandering in the dark here. I'm just gonna do what I always do and just follow one wall. Eventually, I'm gonna get to this generator. Hopefully. Um, I did move the one minecart, and that's where I got behind. Oh. I did move a minecart. That's where the body is. But I don't think there's anything else. Here, see, there's tape deck. I can't even use that now. So here is the cart. It's too dark for me, and I just turned off all of the the... The only minecart I could move was the one that where the body's behind. I don't I don't have any I haven't actually found a generator. So this is actually really, really frustrating. Who thought this was a fucking good idea? Uh.
There are I can't see anything either. There are Oh. All right, well, I don't have any gas. <laughs> Um, I need to find gas now. I found the generator. I have no gas. So I don't know. Is the gas down here? Because if it's not, we're just kind of fucked. Um, I gotta find the mine carts. My strategy of just following one wall, it's, it's, uh, I think it's the only thing that's saving me here. I feel like after I actually got into that room with the body that it got darker. Alright, here's the mine carts. Sam and There's the gas can, seriously? Alright, now I gotta follow the wall again. I can find the dang generator again. Oh god. Thank god. That was that was horrible. Alright. Oh great. Now it's it's just uh Now it's gonna be flashing. Alright. You know what? I did this whole bot down here without- oh, well, I didn't need the gas, but hold on. Now I, I need to turn down the brightness a little bit, because it's super bright now. I had it one. Alright. There we go. Yeah, but I feel like it, it actually the the lighting got darker. I could I I could see before I got the bot get to the body and then I got to the body and it was just like everything got dark. All right. So, I need to what do I need to do? The the southwest corner of the cornfields. Or Gabby had to go to bed. But I want to finish this! <laughs> I'm intrigued! I need to know! I need to know. I don't even know where the southwest corner is. Oh, it's by the community hall, I think. If I can find that. So what am I looking for? You know what? I'm turning out the brightness. It's too damn dark. All right, so I'm I'm here. Yeah, I have the shovel. But I need to find some dirt or something. <coughs> oh my god, stop it, BP10. I, I need to finish up so I can 
go make some more tea and chill out. This is cornfield, right? I want to consider closer to the barn southwest, but... That is the cleansing room, yes. It's, it's way too dark, and I have the brightness turned all the way up. So this is just way too dark. If there's anything I need to absolutely, like, ding this game on, it's how dark it is. It, it gets. And I'm sure that's an artistic choice, but I'm not a fan. Yeah, but they could have given me a freaking flashlight or something. I mean, I, I don't know, I don't know what, what I'm looking for. Is it a pile of dirt? Is it a mound? I mean, I, I don't know. Of course. Of course I could have found a flashlight. So I'm, I, I'm once again playing this game on hard mode. South. They said southwest, right? Alright. Where is the freaking um, flashlight so I can go get it? <laughs> I'm gonna go get the flashlight so I can actually freaking see. Next to storage shed. All right, problem is, it said southwest. That's like southeast. That's a cleansing room.
Where, what building? Oh. Oh, um. Um, all right, there are batteries. You load the batteries. Oh, my God, I had a flashlight. Let's hope they're still charged. Read Andrew's journal. Yeah, we were. How did I miss the fucking batteries? Oh my god, I spent the whole game without a fucking flashlight. And there it is. You dig into the mound and sift through the loose dirt, finding a small brass key. Alright, so we're gonna go back. I think we gotta go back to the to the house, to the rectory, right? Oh man. Man, that food is smelling good, that soup. Ugh. At least I could smell. I wasn't able to smell earlier this morning. Oh yeah. <laughs> I'm going to for the journal too. No, it's not. It's just chickens. Ah, uh, there we go. Another night sleeping downstairs. I don't mean to complain. I can hear James and the others from in here. So happy. So fulfilled. It warms my heart. So I don't mean to complain. But it is cold in here. And something in the room is driving my allergies crazy. It's hard to sleep, but I suppose it's all worth it. Oh, God! She's sleeping oh, in a cot downstairs while he's banging all of the other women up in his bedroom. A dusty old typewriter. Okay, can we read what it says? No. Alright. Unlock the door using the second floor key. I'm not sure what this is supposed to be, honestly. I can't open that safe. A stack of old nudie mags, ranging from pretty tame to seriously perverted, tucked away under the bed as if it's a 12-year-old's bedroom. Father James's bed, messy, covered in thick woolen sheets that have held in years of must. Oh, God. Another altar, also bathed in red light, sitting under a wall of religious imagery. Painting depicting Christ's dead body being removed from the cross at Golgotha. You know, this is kind of gross that they're, like, he's doing all this stuff in front of all of this religious imagery. I guess, I bet there's a, a tape in there. Finally slept last night, spoke with the devil. He, he came to the foot of my bed to bargain for the safety of the flock. But Ello... But hello, I but lo, I out outsmarted him, begged me to stop my crusade, and I spat in his face, spat in the devil's face, and he shriveled away. 
Sin has physical mass. I have measured it in experiments and have determined the mathematical formula for determining a person's sin. Weight not visible to naked eye. Requires a special weighing device attuned to divine wavelengths. Will build and test all flock to ensure cleanliness, especially Lillian Juliet Leonard. Intended to wait for Juliet to come of age for alternative cleansing alternative cleansing, but came across rabbinic text citing consummation of marriage as young as three years and one day will pray and wait for answer. Oh my God. Oh my God. Dream notes. A great winged Leviathan emerges from the clouds, speaking in radio waves, surrounded by angels. Leviathan spoke of the deceiver closing in, bringing unclean evil to the flock, inflect inflecting them with doubt and opening our gates to the outside world. Angels flew into the Leviathan's mouth and lit his tongue on fire. Breath of flame exploded outward and engulfed the world in my dream. I understand, Lord. This is horrible. This is absolutely horrible. A shoebox stuffed with baggies of white powder and a glass pipe blackened at the end? D drugs! Drugs! Oh my god. No, it's not! How am I supposed to get this open? All right, well, now what do I do? Use lamp. Yeah, I was about to go down and look around down. Now that I have a light, I can look around down here. There's a camcorder. I don't see a camcorder in here. Oh, wait, there's one in the- in, in the- Oh my god, really? A camcorder aimed at the bed. You hit the eject button and find a VHS tape inside. Oh my god. Do we really want to look at this? My flock, I have wonderful news. No. No. <clears throat> my flock, I have Wondrous news. The days of reckoning are upon us. Some of you may be afraid. Damn it, no. My flock, I have wondrous news. The days of reckoning are upon us. Be not afraid. This is the day we have been working towards all this time. <coughs> the point of all history the end point of all creation. I have seen the signs. I have heard the word of the Lord. I speak the word of the Lord. I am the word of the Lord. Yes, that's good. There. Three, five, six, nine, damn it. Three, five, six, eight. And, and what's the code for the damn safe? Four. Three, five, six, four.
lock clicks open and slides off the safe door. Praise be to the Lord. Our temple has been revealed. Angels of the Lord have revealed specifications for our temple. The temple of the prophet shall be a sacred place reserved only for Father James and is chosen to further pursue revelation and closeness to the Lord. The temple will contain a single king-size bed, food enough for two people for 200 days, full copies of my scripture, weapons and ammunition. The measurements which must be followed exactly are as follows. Up seal. You have the seal now. No more excuses. It's time to head to the chapel and face the past. Oh my god. I would not be surprised. Because, you know, the day of revelation, or whatever, the, the re day of reckoning? Probably. We're going to find a bunch of dead bodies in there. Place the seal on the door and hear a click somewhere inside the mechanism. Don't be afraid. There's no need to be afraid. We must go through the flames, but the flames will not hurt us. Not our true selves, our spiritual selves. I know his will, and it's time. This world is molded in filth. It's too far gone. They sent demons to test our resolve. They expected us to give up the fight, but here, today, we prove to all of them that we never gave up. Our faith never wavered. Today, we take our place at the foot of the throne of the Lord. Here now, we'll dull the bodies a little, there's no need for it to hurt. Here, drink this. Drink this. Pass these around. Things will go a little fuzzy, but then the flames will take us, and we will join our Lord in his heaven, and we'll be by his side forever, where we belong. the doors and then Andrew and Leonard started soaking rags and lighter fluid while I, I started handing out the cups. Little paper cups full of crushed up quaaludes mixed with lemonade. Father kept preaching as we drank. They lit the rags and put them around the outer walls. Everything caught so quickly as soon as everything was on fire and, and people just said cut down in it. Let it take them. Something clicked. I I don't know what. I needed to get out. I didn't want to die. I remembered Father's temple and I ran. Uh, oh god. I here I guess? I don't know. Do you remember? Or don't you remember? Don't you remember how you survived? Why don't you want to remember? I think I'm playing, uh, what's her name? You know why. When the time came, you couldn't face the Lord. Your doubt had eaten away at you. You didn't join them in their glorious death, but in your doubt, neither did you save them. You are a coward. Uh, 
Another altar, also bathed in red light, sitting under a wall of religious imagery. Covers are still rustled from the few nights you spent here. Oh. Oh boy. The door shut behind me and everything was dark and completely silent. As if the burning chapel and all the people dying behind me didn't exist. The drugs took over then. It was all I could do to crawl into bed before I passed out. This bookshelf is full of fringe religious texts and several copies of Father James's works. In one lower corner tucked away, there is a stack of comic books. More grape nuts. The refrigerator is full of spoiled food. The smell fills the room as soon as you open the door. cooperation to piece all of this together. Who started the fire? Um, pr pretty much everyone. Father James with the first flame, but the others helped it spread. So they weren't coerced? No. They were weeping with joy. People were singing. And you? What did you do? Ma'am? to say. It's just... Lillian, was it something we did? Dad! I just don't understand how you could run off and join some insane cult. I don't know, Dad. I don't know. You're a smart girl. What were you thinking? Lillian, the things I've heard on the news... Where are you going? Mm. You'd be super smart and still end up getting dragged into cult a cult. Uh, yeah, I know. I know. Some of the smartest minds have ended up in, in freaking cults. So, Lillian, have you been having any more thoughts since your last attempt? All the time. It seems as if you almost regret surviving the fire. I don't know. I, I don't. It's so confusing. I didn't want to die, but... I feel like I let them all down. Let them down because you didn't save them, or because you didn't die with them. I don't know anymore. Well, listen to me. No matter what, you deserve to live. I promise you. Lillian, you deserve to live. I... I need to go. I, I can't do this right now. I, I can't. You don't want to hear me ramble about mechanical engineering for another 20 minutes. Tell me more about you. You study communications, right? Bad job does that get you? <laughs> well, right off the bat, not much. I, I couldn't find work, so I uh, ended up backpacking through Europe for a year after college. 
Oh, cool. I've always wanted to do something like that. But then it was amazing. Yeah, it was super fulfilling to see all those different ways of life. Really eye-opening. God, that was a long time ago. Man, I'm jealous. I jumped right into work after school. Working 70, what, 80 hours? You know how it is. Just expect to devote everything to it. It's like a, like a religion. It took me a while to see how messed up it was. Yeah, I can imagine. Hmm. So clearly this is her dealing and going over everything that's happened. Processing, maybe? You have one unheard message. First unheard message sent yesterday at 7.15 p.m. Lil, is, is everything all right? I've been trying to get a hold of you all day. Pl please pick up. I'm worried about you. Okay, just just call me back. Love you. End of message. To delete this message, press 7. Message deleted. Weapons? Why are we here? Did you go early? Yep. I'm almost done, I think. thought I could move on, pretend it hadn't happened, but here it is, I'm looking at it. I was here. We were all here. And now it's just me. Oh, Lil, Jesus, there you are. I tried to get a hold of you for hours. Where are you? I, I, I had to take care of something. Look, just, just... Are you okay? I was getting worried. Yeah, yeah, yes. I'm, I'm fine. Um, I'm heading home now. Tim? There's some things I need to tell you. I met Anne first, waiting for the bus. Normally, I avoid talking to just about anybody, but she struck up the conversation. She was so pleasant, so confident. She smiled at me as if she had known me as a kid, and we were just catching up after all these years. She told me she could tell I had a hole in my life. She knew what that was like, she said. She had also had a hole, but it was gone now. I asked her what she was selling, and she laughed and said nothing, nothing at all, that what she had to offer was free for anyone who wanted it bad enough. I asked her what had helped her. She just said, James. Aha! Uh -huh. <laughs> so, that was a little bit, you know, deeper than I was expecting. Um... You know, the funny thing is, is I've watched uh, and listened to a lot of videos and stuff about cults, and, and, and clearly they must have done a lot of research before they made this game, because it's pretty much textbook. Textbook cult stuff. <laughs> 